Welcome to Absent Law. I'm Brett Burney. A couple of months ago, the folks at Branch Fire reached out to me about the significant updates that they included in iAnnotate version 4.5. Now, I reviewed iAnnotate about two years ago, and it continues to be one of my most popular videos on the Absent Law YouTube channel. Now, I've always liked iAnnotate, but it wasn't always my first choice for file management or PDF annotation apps. Although there were some great features that I always appreciated in iAnnotate, like the ability to create multiple annotation toolbars and then customize those individual annotation toolbars. That's always been fantastic with iAnnotate. But with these latest updates in version 4.5, I wanted to revisit the app since I do get a lot of folks asking me about iAnnotate and I know a lot of you actually use the app as well. So here is Branchfire's blog post about the updates in version 4.5. I'm gonna take them a little bit out of order here. Let's start with the search capability. Now, one of the things that Branchfire did was now allow you to search from the main library page across not only the files that you have local on your iPad inside iAnnotate, but also across all of your cloud-based storage services, which is really pretty amazing. In the upper right corner there, you see the little search icon, the little magnifying glass. If I tap on that and tap in the search box, and search for Logitech. You can see that it's going through, I'll hide my keyboard here, and there was no result in the local files, but right underneath there in the Dropbox, there were 32 results. And then if I scroll down here, you can see under Google Drive, I had eight results. Now, there are a couple of limitations here. First of all, within Dropbox, I annotate can only search the file names. So you see all the results from Dropbox here include the word Logitech inside the file name. But if I scroll all the way down to Google Drive, you can see that I annotate not only can search the file names, it can also search the content of the actual files. Now, if I open a document, I can search the content of the document, even if it did come from Dropbox. I tap the magnifying glass in the upper right corner and I can search for a word here and you can see that it'll list all the results of that word from the actual content of the document. So in this case, I had nine results for the search on the word cooperation. But if you look way down at the bottom there, it tells me that in addition to the results found in the document, it actually also searched my entire library. And if I tap the little blue arrow down there at the bottom, it'll go through and show me all the results from my library, including the files inside Dropbox. And I think down here I had Google Drive, 44 results from within Google Drive. So I can swap back and forth between the document search and the library search right from here from within iAnnotate. Now the second feature in 4.5 is the navigation tools. Now in the upper right corner, there is the little checkerboard icon. And if I tap that, by default, I get this sort of minimized pane over on the right side that shows me the thumbnails of the pages inside this PDF file. I can look at it in this minimized version or if you tap the word full in the upper right corner there on the right pane, it'll actually go into a full screen here so that you can see all the pages this way. And to get back to that minimized pane, just type the word minimize in the upper right corner there and it goes back to this. Now you can tap and move and drag around individual pages in this view, which is great. And then if you long tap on there, you can see that you have the ability to add a page, remove a page, or even rotate a page. Now you can also do this the same if you tap edit at the top of that right side pane there. And you can see when I tap edit now, I have those options down at the bottom of that right pane and I can do the same thing there to rotate a page, for example. The other thing within this navigation pane that I am very excited about is the outline tab at the very bottom there. Now this may not seem like that much of a big deal, except for the fact that we've always had to deal with this uh, dichotomy between an outline in PDF and then bookmarks. Because if you create a PDF file on your computer, send it to your iPad, 
it shows up as an outline. But if you create a bookmark on your iPad, it sends it back to the computer. It, it, it's just all very confusing that it was two different things, but we were using the same words. Anyway, all that has changed, which is why it's exciting because I annotate now just puts it into this single column or this tab called outline. So you can see here, these are the PDF bookmarks that I can actually jump around to the page that I need. But inside the PDF now, if I wanted to add a bookmark, I could do that. You can see here on my annotation toolbar, I can tap bookmark here and add a bookmark in this area. And uh, I'm just gonna call this the to do. Get rid of my keyboard there. Tap the check mark at the top up there so that it adds that as a extra bookmark. And you can see now it shows up on the right pane as an extra bookmark that I can tap into. Now, this is fantastic. It's so very helpful to put bookmarks into your PDF so that you can jump around to the section that you need. Now, if you synchronize this back to your computer, that bookmark is there, but on the computer, your Mac or your PC, it'll actually show up at the very top of the bookmark pane on whatever PDF software that you're using, and it will be in a group called Branch Fire Bookmarks. So it's still there, it synchronizes back to the computer, it's just not gonna be in line with the other bookmarks, it'll be in its own little group up there. So you can still get around that. It's just a little confusing on the way that it works, but it's available there. Now the last feature that I wanna cover here from Branch Fire's blog post is the ability to merge two documents together. Now I typically do this by going out into the library in the upper left corner, that little plus sign up there takes me back to the library. And you can see here, I can select a couple of files. For example, here's a couple of opinions, the Keith Lee opinion and the Sprint v. Williams. And I wanna merge those two PDFs together. I select them here in my file list and then down to the bottom center, there's three different dots there. And when you tap those three different dots, it'll come up with a selection of options there, including the very bottom there to merge. And if you tap merge, you can actually rearrange the documents so that it merges in the exact way that you want it to merge and say merge documents here. And you can see it'll actually create a new document now. And if I go into the navigation pane, you can see that if I scroll down here, I can see where there's the Keith Lee opinion, and way down here is the start of the Sprint uh, v. Williams opinion. Now, the only thing I wish I annotate would have done here is added uh, an actual PDF bookmark where the next document begins, but th that's okay. I can do that myself. I just wish that it was sort of there and automatic. Now, if you wanna save this document, just be sure to tap on the tab up there before you close out of it, or you could lose it. Just tap the tab and you can see one of the options there is I can save to a uh, section, like I can put it up into Dropbox if I want to or et cetera. Uh, another feature that I really like about iAnnotate now is this ability to view two documents side by side. If I tap on the tab of one of the open documents here, you can see at the bottom I have the option of two document view. And when I do that now, it actually opens up this other document here. And then I can select another document over on the side that I can compare it with. I love this ability to compare two documents or maybe two different versions of a document. Now this is not the slide over or the split view within the iPad iOS. This is basically within I annotate as a way to look at two different documents. To get out of the two document view, just tap on the document tab again, and you can see it says at the bottom, exit to document view, and you are back to normal. Now the last little thing I just wanted to point out that I love here, let me get a little bit of a bigger document and pull it up, is at the very bottom right corner over here, you, you can see there's a little odd looking icon there. First of all, it tells you what page that you're on, which I love, but it also has this little icon that shows me exactly where in the document that I'm scrolling. So even if I zoom in, you can see that it shows me a different little box there on the document that I'm looking at, and then I can zoom back in or zoom back out. I just love that option there to give me a little bit of a visual of exactly where in the document or the page that I'm looking at. If you don't like that, you can change it go back to the main document list, and in the upper right corner, hit the little gear icon there, which will give you the option to go to the app settings. If you tap app settings, it actually takes you out of iAnnotate over to the settings app from iOS, and you can see under iAnnotate over here that you can tap onto display, 
And under display, you have this show page locator. You can turn that off so that now if you go back into one of the documents here, you can see it still tells you the page, but it doesn't tell you the little, little icon there. So you can switch that off and on by just going into the settings app and and say show page locator and get out of that as well. So that's the updates for iAnnotate version 4.5. You can download iAnnotate for $9.99 on the App Store. I'll have the links below. Be sure to sign up at appsandlaw.com so that you can be notified of new app reviews and you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.